Hello, good morning. I'm about to demonstrate the uh, my project RF amplifier using RD15HPF1. Let's start here. Yes, this is the layout of my RD51HPF1 uh, RF amplifier. There it is. And this side, as you can see at the center of the screen, this is the 1 watt RF amplifier using 20C20 PB3 and uh, C1970 Mitsubishi transistor. Here is the result after the etching. There it is. Sorry for the blurred image because the phone I use is more of uh, low quality. I'm sorry for that. I saw this in the internet, the layout of the RD15HBF1 transistor. Yes, that's it. I changed the value of the attenuator resistor from the input side of the amplifier. This is originally 39 ohms, 150 ohms, and 150 ohms. I replaced that with the uh, value is that 18 ohms and 300 ohms and another 300 ohms because I have the I have a 1 watt more or less 1 watt I think it's uh, I measured that 0 0.9 watt the exciter I use to feed this input side of the RF amplifier using RD15HBF1. There you have the details. Uh, you can put down your comments on the video under if you want to know something about this of the details. I only see this in the internet. Uh, actually, one of my friend shout out for my friend who gave this to me, Mr. Albert. Uh, uh, his name's Albert De Lima. Shout out. How are you, my friend? Hope you're doing good. Yes, uh, this is the construction of the one white one watt I mean one watt RF amplifier this is, I use this uh, transistor two transistor only the small one is the C2053 Mitsubishi original and the uh, final transistor one is uh, Mitsubishi also C1970 it produce one watt more or less I as I said I have the output here of about 0 0.9 watt which is very good yes this is the so you can see there's a there's a coil, there's a rewind. Uh, actually, this is a transformer. There's a details for the end of the video. For the 
contact you. It's not yet done when I capture this picture. There's a lot of parts uh, and the uh, heat sink did with the uh, with this transistor C1970. There's the parts I planted on the surface of the circuit RD15HBF1. Sorry for the blurred image, sorry for that. Yes, this is the graph of the power input birth versus the power output. As you can see, this 0 0.5 watt is enough to to produce the 15 watt output of the RD15HBF1 using 12.5 volts. can see the data sheet on the internet also of the transistor the, here is the full construction there's the output side there's the RG316 coax cable also 50 ohms the RD15 the coils the capacitors There. Yes, I build a power meter dummy load. Power meter with dummy load using 1 kilo ohms 2 watts carbon resistor. All in parallel. Uh, you should get the 50 ohm resistance when they are all together. There's a sorry for the blurred image again. There's a 4148 diode and there's a 104 or 0 0.1 nanoparad capacitor and there's the trimmer 10 kilo ohms and I use this uh, BU meter from the old old sound system The, video, I, the picture shows that there's the at the center of the uh, screen there is the I bought in online the RF modulator I, uh, I used the frequency of 103.9 and I have to test the output voltage there's a formula to so you can oh, you can have the estimated power output of the RF amplifier. You can comment down and I will show you the formula how to get. Uh, because I did this I did this because I don't have uh, uh, SX two hundred or uh, SWR power meter. My my friend also only teach me how to how to calculate this for the output there's a formula you can comment down below so I can give you the exact uh, details of how, what is the formula to convert the voltage into the power output There it is. Uh, again, the, I use a formula to measure the my uh, the output of my one watt RF amplifier. Yes, you can comment down below. Sorry. There is the complete uh, construction of implant implant 
transplanted the uh, parts from the PCB surface. Again, I'm sorry for, for I'm not that fluent to speak in English. As you can see here, there's a 7805 regulator for the for the supply of the RF FM modulator. Sorry, and this one is also 7805 regulator to drive the gate of the RD15 HPF1 gate. Yes, there it was. I put some heat sink. If you're using a heat sink, you should the the top of the transistor must be not connected to the aluminum heat sink. Uh, use the spacer, washer, plastic plastic washer, and the what you call that, the mica insulator. This is very important. There it is. The, the transformer or the coil I use, I have to fill with the glue stick for it so it can never be deformed this is important yes I used the there is the Mitsubishi C1970 uh, there's a trimmer here trimmer capacitor this is 10 kilo ohms this is it I test it with the uh, when it out about uh, 12 to 15 watts the resistor dummy load here is to produce higher temperature uh, so be careful with that you can touch it but you can hold it for a long time And that means the power output is on the resistor dummy load. For the testing of 4.5 volts gate supply to the gate of the RDA 15 HBF1, I have 30.37 volt. If I convert this to RF uh, wattage, this can be more or less 19 or uh, maximum of 20 watt output of the RF amplifier using RD15 HBF1. Yes, one of my friend here gave me this schematic diagram of the 1 watt RF amplifier. Here's the details. Uh, that shout out to my friend who gave this to me, Mr. Biredula. Hey Biredula, you can search him, and she, ha she has a blog of this a uh, lot about uh, RF. All about RF. There you go. Uh, Anything else here? Yes, this is the. I'm sorry, but the RF modulator here is in the upside down position. I bought this is this online here in the Philippines. There, there. Uh, I'm sorry. Maybe I will post another video of how the biometer works and you if you have to tune the output power for the maximum
مدد well that's all see you for the next uh, video of my testing of my rd15 hpf1 RF amplifier. Here is the layout I use. Thank you for watching. Comment down below and please, if you can share, like, subscribe, uh, it will be appreciated. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.